Okay, everyone, we're going to be finishing up this chapter by talking about the endocrine system. Um, and a lot of you guys are probably wondering why we cover the endocrine system in a chapter about uh, the nervous system. But the nervous system is all about transmitting messages throughout our body uh, to control our organs, to control our muscles, to sense information from the environment. Um, and our hormonal system, which is controlled by the endocrine system, uh, is actually doing the same thing, but at a slower pace uh, through hormones um, that are produced by the endocrine system's glands that are located in a bunch of different areas of the body, and you can kind of see that in the image here to the right. So here are the major glands we're going to be talking about. Um, the first one is the pineal gland that is in the very center of the brain, kind of near the thalamus. It helps regulate our bodily rhythms and our sleep cycle. So melatonin is the natural hormone that our body produces when it uh, senses that it's getting dark and it's getting late at night and we begin to get sleepy because of that. That's something that people will oftentimes take um, as a supplement is uh, melatonin. Um, a pituitary gland is known as the master gland. That actually sits at the base of our brain, kind of right behind the, um, the eyes, uh, and it's connected to our hypothalamus. Uh, it's called the master gland because it controls the rest of our endocrine system's glands. Uh, so it helps influence growth. It uh, produces hormones that allow women to lactate and produce milk. Um, it also regulates the activity of all the other glands in the body. Um, it, let me see if I have a picture here. Yeah, so here's a pituitary gland. Um, again, it kind of sits here at the base of the brain, and it actually hangs off of the brain, and it sits in a little cavity in this skull that like protects it kind of like a cup. Um, the other interesting facet of the pituitary gland is that it has two lobes. One lobe is a little bit larger than the other. Uh, and again, it hangs down away from the brain and it's protected by the cup of the skull. What does that make you think of? Um, I often call it the brain balls to help students remember this, uh, this gland. It, it looks like testicles, it's protected, uh, it's very important and very sensitive, um, and it controls a whole bunch of other functions of the body. So I, I jokingly call it the brain balls. So just a little silliness, but that is uh, what the pituitary gland kind of looks like. And you'll see that if you pay attention to some of the other images from this chapter, the pituitary gland um, is shown in those as well. Um, then in our throats, we have our thyroid gland. If you put your hand kind of around your neck gently, and if you swallow, you'll feel um, your Adam's apple go up and down, but right around that is your thyroid gland. Uh, and that produces hormones that regulate the metabolism of the body. It also um, makes you feel warm or cold, depending on if it's hyperactive or hypoactive, so too active or too low. Um, it also has to do with like skin dryness, uh, hair um, thickness. There's a lot of different things that it influences. It's also one of the glands that most often has problems. Uh, so if you have dry skin, thinning hair, um, you're cold a lot, really sluggish, and you're gaining weight, you may have an issue with your thyroid. That would be an underactive thyroid. If you're jittery, um, anxious, maybe your eyes kind of bulge a little bit and you're always hot, uh, then you might have an overactive thyroid gland. They, they estimate that anywhere between 20 and 30 something percent of women in the United States have a thyroid issue. Um, I do personally, I have a hypoactive thyroid and I take medication for that. And it's a pretty easy um, test. It's usually a blood draw. You have to go to an endocrinologist, a person who specializes in the endocrine system. I went go to a general practice physician because they're not usually specialized enough to understand the blood results. We just do a blood test and then they can give medication, take a pill once a day. It's pretty simple, um, but it is one of those glands that is commonly um, malfunctioning in a lot of people, so it's a good thing to get checked out regularly, especially for women. Um, it also relates to fertility. It relates to a whole bunch of things. Like you're really tired and you're gaining weight or you're really excitable and tense and you're having trouble sleeping, and you're, you can't seem to gain weight, you're just losing weight, then it might be a thyroid gland issue. Um, we also have our adrenal glands. They sit on top of our kidneys. It's kind of a strange spot for them, um, if you think about it, but it also helps regulate um, our salt balance, which is what our kidneys 
help with our bloodstream to, to flush out waste uh, into our bladders. Um, they secrete hormones that arouse the body and they help with our adjustment to stress. So adrenaline comes from our adrenal glands. So epinephrine is another name for that. Um, it actually, so if you get stressed out, that is coming from your adrenal glands on top of your kidneys. They also do some, uh, uh, has some effect on our sexual functioning. And then we also have our pancreas that releases insulin to help relate our blood sugar and hunger. Um, that kind of sits around the stomach and the liver and, um, is relating to diabetes. So type one diabetes is, um, the type of diabetes that means that the, the pancreas is just malfunctioning from birth. It doesn't produce insulin. Um, but type two diabetes is when a person's body becomes resistant to insulin and they have to add insulin, um, artificially, typically relating to poor diet choices and obesity, not always, but very commonly um, that's the case. But type 1 diabetes is what a, a person is born with. Um, typically, pe people with type 1 diabetes will have an insulin pump that actually has a port that actually goes right into their bloodstream that monitors their blood sugar and will automatically release insulin. A person with type 2 diabetes typically has to inject insulin uh, several times a day to regulate their blood sugar. So the endocrine system is comprised of a number of glands that release the chemical messengers known as hormones into the bloodstream and communicate with our other bodily parts. And it responds to input from our nervous system, and particularly the hypothalamus. So again, we talked about the hypothalamus with the four Fs, feeding, fighting, fleeing, and mating. Um, and so if you look at that, it's involved, the, the endocrine system is involved with arousal, metabolism, growth, and sex. Um, so that feeding, fighting, fleeing, and mating has to do with these things as well. Um, they're also imp the important glands of the endocrine system include the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, again, that's the big one, thyroid gland, gland and adrenal glands. Here again is the pituitary gland. Um, also, our sex hormones are also a part of the endocrine system. So in males, the major reproductive glands are the testes. They're responsible for secreting testosterone, which influences sexual function and plays a critical role in puberty. So that's the development of what we call secondary sexual characteristics. So um, body hair, broad shoulders, the deep voice, uh, facial hair, uh, more square jaw, muscle development. That's, you know, the, the um, effects of testosterone. In females, the major reproductive glands are the ovaries. These are responsible for secreting estrogen as well as some other hormones that are called estrogens as a group. They also uh, influence sexual function. They play a critical role in puberty and is one of the major hormones involved in the menstrual cycle. So estrogen goes up and down throughout the woman's uh, monthly cycle. Um, and again, estrogen is also responsible for secondary sexual characteristics. Um, typically, broader hips, narrow waist. Uh, breast development, um, less body hair, keeping their voice relatively high compared to men. Uh, all these things are what we consider sex secondary sexual characteristics. It doesn't have to do with the actual genitalia, but the kind of the appearance of being male or female. Um, and I believe that's it. Oh, and here's uh, some of the endorphins. Um, and so these relate to other hormones. So endorphins, we've talked about a little bit. They're neuromodulators. Um, they are um, our body's natural response to pain. We also have melatonin. That's released by the pineal gland in response to daily cycles of light and dark. That's what makes you tired in the evening and make you want to go to bed. Um, epinephrine is the adrenal hormone, also known as adrenaline, that tends to arouse the body and is associated with fear. If any of you guys have um, severe allergic reactions to things like bees, nuts, shellfish, you may carry an EpiPen. It's actually containing epinephrine, which essentially makes the body um, temporarily uh, like reverse the effects of uh, a, an allergic reaction, but only temporarily you still have to go to the ER. <laughs> um, and then we have norepinephrine. That's a neurotransmitter and adrenal hormone that tends to rouse the body, but it's all it's more associated with anger than with fear. Um, and then we have our thyroid hormones. They help regulate our metabolism rate. Um, and then I hope you guys check this out. It's going to be on the video link below, the neurological love song. Know it, love it, learn it, and sing it to all your uh, love interests in the future, and you're going to really impress them.